From cruises to consumer goods, the impact of the bridge collapse could be immediate. That's right. Even though the Port of Baltimore is one of the smallest container ports in the northeastern seaboard, it's home to three major cruise lines and handles exports and imports for some of the world's major automakers. Consumer reporter Susan Hogan joins us now with how customers could see a costly impact from this collapse. Susan? Well, that's right. So when you think of the Port of Baltimore, two things may come to your mind. It's an inexpensive way to hop aboard a cruise ship, and it's the deepest harbor in Maryland's Chesapeake Bay. But what you may not know, it is one of the the largest ports by volume for a multitude of consumer products we depend on every single day. And the longer container ships can't get in or out, the likelihood of this impacting consumers in the wallet rises with every moment. The Port of Baltimore is the busiest port for shipping cars and has been for 13 years straight, according to the Maryland Port Administration. Nissan, General Motors, Toyota, and VW are just some of the major manufacturers that depend on the port for importing and exporting hundreds of thousands of cars a year. With no cargo ships coming or going for now, shifting vehicles to other ports could lead to delays. The Port of Baltimore is also home to some of the largest retailers' distribution centers, including FedEx, Home Depot, and Amazon. Amazon telling News 4 it's assessing future impacts and will make adjustments to operations as needed. And with shipping paused indefinitely, supply chain experts warn the effects on getting goods to consumers will be felt worldwide. Unfortunately, this shows just the fragility of the global supply chain and the fact that there's always some kind of incident or disruption that's impacting the supply chain. Jonathan Gold is a supply chain expert with the National Retail Federation. He says manufacturers are no strangers to global incidents impacting supplies of consumer goods. Right now, folks are in assessment mode to understand the impact they're seeing right now but then also in conversations with their ocean carriers as well as other supply chain uh, providers to understand what the next steps are. Where are the cargoes gonna go that are were first directed towards Baltimore? As the deepest harbor in Maryland's Chesapeake Bay, the Port of Baltimore is the 11th largest port in the U.S. and the ninth largest based on the value of cargo. And it's also the largest U.S. port by volume for handling farm and construction machinery. And with no access to the port right now, shipping experts say this is a massive problem. It is then going to cause a ripple effect uh, in the northeast of the U.S. Because obviously when you can't use the border of Baltimore, the cargo, both import and export, needs to find a different outlet. Another immediate impact, the cruise line industry. Royal Caribbean, Carnival, Norwegian all run voyages in and out of the Port of Baltimore. Royal Caribbean told News 4 it's monitoring the situation and working on alternatives for upcoming sailings. Carnival said it was too premature to comment on impacts. And Norwegian tells us at this time there is no impact on their itineraries. They don't have any voyages scheduled to depart from the city of Baltimore until later this year in September and October. Now, we did just hear an update from Carnival that told us that it is moving their operations to Norfolk for the time being. One other thing, too, according to the American Trucking Association, an estimated 4,900 trucks per day carry an annual average of $28 billion worth of goods. But now that will have to be rerouted at a cost to shippers and ultimately, Leon and Sean, to us. Mm. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're all going to feel it. We're all going to feel it yeah. one all way right. or another. Thank you, Susan. And that